Hey, greetings, everyone. This is Ahav Ever from the Chronicles of Ahav Ever. Today, I'm just going to do a short video um, detailing uh, the preparations I do whenever I am uh, in my uh, Bit Knesset in my synagogue when it's time for me to read the Torah, exactly how I do it. Um, so, of course, I'm in a place where I need to wear masks because of the Corona to COVID-19 situation, and there might be a little bit of noise in the background. But hopefully you guys will be able to see uh, exactly how I prepare for this, because it could be on this uh, Thursday on Yom HaMishi, uh, at the Bet Knesset where I pray, I could easily be asked to read from the Torah. So one of the things I just wanted to show was uh, if I share my screen, for example, uh, let me get out of this one here. And this is going to be just a real informal kind of video here. Um, there's a site that I usually use for um, practicing. Um, unfortunately, this site, won't, I won't be able to use it anymore for um, anything dealing with uh, Chrome, because uh, for some reason, I think the programming, the software Chrome doesn't support Flash anymore. So basically, tomorrow's the last day I can use this, and that's why I'm doing this video now. Um, essentially, whenever I'm learning uh, to prepare myself for like reading the Torah, when I'm on, online, when I don't have a, a book ready and handy, uh, essentially what I use is this site here from, uh, it's called the Yad Ma'aritz site. Um, and they have a section of it that's for uh, practicing uh, Torah. And it's really, it's really a cool system. I've been using it for a number of years now. Um, and essentially, uh, the thing is, for those who don't know, uh, in, uh, I'm a part of the Yemenite Jewish community. And in Yemenite Jewish uh, synagogues and uh, Bit Knesset, uh, whenever uh, a reading from the Torah is done, each person who's called to the Torah reads for themselves. Uh, so essentially, what you see in these pictures here from the site uh, is this is a picture of the Torah being raised, uh, and basically during the part of the uh, um, the prayer, the tefillah, where the Torah is raised to be able to show that this is the Torah as we received it from Moshe Rabbeinu and has been transcribed throughout the generations. And everybody is supposed to witness to the fact that this is the Torah. So each individual person is called to read from the Torah. They read for themselves. And there's a person who stands to the left um, that, uh, for example, uses what's called a yad, a little pointer, uh, to be able to point them to like where they're reading from if they need be. Some people, for example, like my uh, Bet Knesset, my synagogue, uh, the, the Morty that's there who does that doesn't uh, usually point unless someone really needs it. Uh, so usually when I go up, like for example, he doesn't point because he knows for the most part I can I know how to do without re without needing and to point where the uh, things are. And usually what he's pointing out is what's called the ta'amim. It's the ta'amim or almost like punctuation um, in ancient Hebrew. And in the text of the Torah, as I showed in some previous videos, there's no vowel points and no uh, punctuation in the text. It's just all uh, consonants. Uh, so a person would have to know um, by heart already what the uh, ta'amim are and what the uh, consonants are. And in this particular picture, um, this is um, a situation where you have someone reading what's called the Targum, a Tarjum in Timini, which the Tarjum is uh, a translation of uh, the Torah into Aramaic. So for each line that's read, for example, here, uh, at the end of the sentence, then the Tarjum would be uh, said. But that's only, that only happens on Shabbat uh, and also uh, Chagim. Uh, it doesn't happen uh, during the week. So as an example, I'm trying to prepare to make sure I'm ready that on Yom Chamishi, uh, today it's Yom Shini, meaning today it's Monday, and on Thursday, I potentially could be called to read the Torah, uh, so I need to be ready for that just in case. So this parasha for that I'm dealing with now is called Wayishlach Yaakov. So essentially this site allows me to pick that. It allows me to go in and pick the uh, Aliyah, which is the, the section of the Torah that's being read. So the, the sections that are gonna be read on Yom Chamishi come from Rishon. Um, and then it allows me to go in. Now, this automatically gives you an audio, which I'm going to turn off, meaning that there's uh, someone who's recorded really reading, uh, you know, each part of the Torah. And essentially, I'm going to turn that off because I don't need uh, that to be there. I can do that myself. So the way that this site worked um, or works is that um, essentially on the right side, you have uh, the text of the Torah with uh, the vowels and with also the ta'amim. So, for example, that's what you have here. Um, as uh, preparation and practice. And then the practice before reading a Sefer Torah, this section here is actually what it looks like in a Torah scroll. So this section here is the way you would practice it uh, with all of the uh, vowels and also the, uh, the punctuation. And this part here is where you would put that into practice and knowing that you'd remembered where they are. Uh, so, and I covered that in some previous videos about how that actually looks. So the section that I would have to be ready for um, if I was called to the Torah, uh, to read on Yom Hamishi would start right here. Um, let me put that on the snooze, that came up automatically. So essentially it would start right, right here. So the way I usually go through and try to learn this is like this. I go in and I focus on the part that I need. And I make that big. So I usually do about two times of each line. Um, and then I switch over to the uh, unpointed text that looks like the Sefer Torah. 
So the way that I would practice this is like this. So then I would go over just one more time to make sure I actually have that memorized. So then I would go to the unpointed text here. And this is the way it would look like it's in a Torah scroll. So you'll notice that all the little like lines and dots and little markings are missing here um, because of the fact that this is the way it's written in the Torah scroll and this is the way it's always been written in the Torah scroll because uh, those marks were, as I mentioned in a previous video, were made by the Mesorotim, the Mesorites, who were essentially were trying to preserve the language for those who didn't remember how to read it from here, knowing all of that stuff without, you know, having a situation where someone could read it and understand it if they didn't remember where all these things were. So for example, based on what I just read, this would go like this. So if I go back and then, for example, when I go to the next line, so I would see here, Kutonti Mikol ha hosodim umikol ho amath asher osito abdabdeho ki vamakli varati at a yarden hazan wato ho yithi lishne mahanoth. So, for example, this part I'd already practiced it a few times, so let's see if I've got it down pat here. Kotonti Mikol ha hosodim umikol ho amath asher osithi asher ositho et abdecho kive magli ovarti et arjen hazem wato hithi lishne mahanoth. I made a mistake there. So um, essentially, if I was in the bit Knesset, if I made a mistake and nobody corrected me, then everybody in the Knesset would either say something like, mm, you know. That I made a mistake, and the Mori who has the Yad, like what you see here, would correct me. So, because I noticed it myself, and if I corrected myself, then it would just keep going as is. So, for example, I'm going to do that again because I'm, I'm practicing and I want to make sure I have the down pat just in case they call me. So, I'd read it again. So I got that one down pat better. Now this one I had already practiced before, but I made a mistake right around here. Sometimes this word throws me off. So I have to make sure to stress Wahikani. So going back, for example, it starts here. Hatsileni, Hatsileni, no, no, see, I messed up there. Hatsileni, no, me, yad, oh, he, me, yad, I saw. Kiore on, oh, he, oh, and you vo, Wahikani, em, almonim. So that one I got better off. So if I go to the next one, Wato, Marto. So that one I got mixed up here. I thought it was just stop there, where it's actually a ta'am here that stops here. So these three words are together. So I need to do that again. So that's the end of this section that is being read on Yom Khamishi, which is Thursday, of the Torah. So for example, if uh, I was called up, this is what I would have to be ready for. So um, today, I, you know, I wasn't sure if I was going to get called up, so I practiced last night. So again, the process that is used here is that, uh, you know, I've done this enough to where pretty much I can read, uh, you know, this like a couple times. 
um, and be able to go to this pretty quickly. Um, and a lot of times I already recognize where some of the ta'amim are or where the punctuation is. For example, I know here, even without looking over on the other side, that this is ya'agov. And that's because of the fact that ya'agov is pronounced the same way most of the time. And I know this is elohe, ovi of rohom, we elohe, ovi yitzog, adonai ho, omer elai, shuv l'artsacho, ulamo l'artsacho, waiti vo aimoch. So that's the thing. So there's uh, that's the way I practice it, generally speaking. I usually do two, uh, each line twice, uh, reading it from here with, you know, with, this is a tam. So this is a tam that is uh, basically goes, with your mar, ya so that's a tam there. This is the punctuation here. So I think I covered this in a previous video, um, but, you know, this gives a more uh, up close uh, look at it. And essentially that's the way I practice uh, whenever I'm um, preparing to read from the Torah. Um, and there's some um, what's called aliyot where I know them better than others. And there's some where it takes me a little bit more time because of the words. Uh, there's some situations where certain words trip me up like this one here. Wahikani. So there's some reason the hirik uh, here and the patach here and then hirik again throws me off sometimes. Um, it's just a personal thing. You know, uh, sometimes I, I may forget if it's like a, a, a pe or fe here. Um, and also you have to remember that this is uh, this word and this word have a ta'am between them that connects them. So it's penyovo. So it'd be penyovo wahikani. So if I were to say pen, yavo, that's incorrect. It's penyovo. And that's where all of this is important because one of the things I learned early on when I was learning this when I was a lot younger was that by changing some of these ta'amim, you can actually change the meaning of the text. There's some of them that pretty much is the same thing no matter what, but uh, you can change the text. So for example, if I didn't put this afnoho here correctly, where it's no, miyad ohi, miyad So when it goes from here, here, this is almost like a semicolon right here. So this is like a stop and thought within the sentence. If I were to take that out and not do it, you know, for example, if I said, miyad ohi, miyad So it's like I would change the meaning by not putting it there. The same with that this is still posuk, this is like, like almost like a period in English. So that's the end of the sentence. So if I took that out and just kept going, I would also change the meaning there. So this is, again, just a short video of how I'm preparing to make sure that uh, I read the Torah correctly. And this is how I always do it. And I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, we'll probably be coming with some new videos in the, in the next few like weeks or so, maybe next uh, month or something like that. So take care. This is Ahab Ever. And uh, take care. Bye-bye.